Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meet Menaka Celebrating You. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to episode 24 with Dr. Naushet Khan, who is an associate professor who is going to speak about COVID-19 today. And uh, I have requested Dr. Naushet Khan to do a webinar for us. It will be on the 6th of February, 6th of February at 11 o'clock in the morning, UK time. I've tried to adapt to his availability because as you know, at three o'clock we have the talk show. So we had to work around it and I'm sure it is going to be immensely valuable. So please do join us on the 6th of February again. Now it's question time. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Of course, Rick. Okay. Thank you, Nachar Khan and all and especially at the thank for the meet Menaha. So it's a special <laughs> topic to everybody. So good education to everybody. So he almost all things he covered for the public. Uh, my question is, uh, what about immunocompromised patient and vaccination? Right. And something about the vitamin D mechanism. Yes. Something about the post uh, COVID complication in the vital organs is enough. <laughs> you can explain. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's enough. Actually, it's a very complex, a broad area. Yes, the immunocompromised patients, that is one of the vulnerable group. So yes. those patients need the vaccine. Okay. Need vaccine. Yes. Yeah, need vaccines so because uh, uh, if you get the, the virus, they will be affected more. Because of that reason, yes, of course, they need the vaccine. There is no question about it. That is the first answer. The vitamin D is a really, I'm a little bit uh, more interested about this uh, vitamin D. And uh, initially, we are talking about in the March, February time. We did not understand this very much. Now, I would, I would like to tell you a few words uh, because you asked this question. There is a molecule called SPM molecule, there's a specified molecule in there. When the virus come, our immune, our immune system will trigger and there's, there are some chemicals will be secreted. We call these as a cytokine. The cytokines will go up. The cytokines, if they shoot too much, that will destroy our body, that will damage our body. So that is like overprotective, right? So this particular molecule, the SPM molecule, will control the cytokine. If it is go up, this, this will block. If it go down, it will make them secrete more. So that SPM molecule will balance the cytokine. Most of the people think the people die or people are affected because of the virus. Actually, the virus don't kill the people. The cytokine storm and the acute respiratory distress syndrome, and these are the things kill the people. And also the hemoglobin breakdown, I already explained that because of that only people die, not because of the virus. So this, this SPM molecule produced by, uh, the, you know, if you see that uh, resource bears that come from this uh, SPM molecule, the vitamin D and omega-3 oil, this is important, this is uh, the fatty acid. These are important component of this SPM molecules. If you have a shortage of uh, vitamin D, or the omega-3 oil or the, 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 uh, the, the fat component, you will have a deficiency of these SPM molecules. If, you are, if there are any deficiency, what will happen? You will have an uncontrolled cytokine storm. So your body will be affected. You are more prone to death. So that's a situation happened maybe in the past and the, that will happen in the future as well. So the, the point I'm trying to make our population, you know, maybe Asian migrated people or the African migrated people or, you know, my, in this country. And what will happen because of the less of uh, less uh, sunlight and the, the way we, we wear the clothes and all, and probably the, the amount of uh, sunlight we get probably not enough. If you go and check with your GP, most of us will have some sort of vitamin D deficiency. So because of that reason, we have to take the vitamin D, D in this situation. We did not have much problem before until we come to the extremely low situation. But now, which is important, as I said, because this SPA molecule depend on this vitamin D. So that's why. That is the second question. The first question you are, uh, ask about this uh, immunocompromise and second one is uh, the vitamin D. The third one, can you, can you recall that for me? 
yeah complication uh, or post op management or complication and the post op management oh, yes. of covid of patient that in the vital organ that means yes, of heart lungs brain exactly. etc this this is depend on where are the receptors you know locating and uh, some people will have number will be more or less in the different organs this will affect the kidney this will affect the brain and this will affect the lungs effect the multiple organ will be affected but depend on how much affecting is a different story so some people will be affected less very less and some people will be more that also depend on the, uh, the how this uh, you know their protective uh, situation and the immunological situations everything depend on number of factors so if they are affected now i have seen some patients they after getting this covid after few months later also they have a shortness of breath and some people uh, sleeping difficulties and some people will have a you know the stroke you know that like a uh, what is that a brain related symptoms and you know so th there are number of different different complications are coming because of the covid and also we don't know we have seen this disease for only one year so maybe long term what are the complications going to come we have no idea but still it's coming one of the very important and also one of the interesting complication recently i observed and there are some publications have been published auto uh, the auto um, autonomic nervous system disturbance this is a i, I can't forget about this one of the cardiologists was uh, presented to our emergency department and suddenly his blood pressure is dropping significantly he is feeling the dizziness because he had the covid before there are publications have been published and the autonomic nervous system being affected because of this uh, uh, covid 19 and you can go and read about it as a very interesting area so as you said number of number of uh, the complications are coming because of the uh, covid 19 i totally agree with you Thank you, Dr. Gan. I'm just going to rush through because there are many questions uh, yes, asked uh, privately and uh, personally. And I know Dr. Anton Bala, you're waiting. Let me yeah. go through this question and I will give the question to you. Uh, first question is, what is the difference between both the vaccines, Pfizer and Oxford? Right. Pfizer vaccine is a mRNA, simply if I want to tell you. And uh, in the virus, there are two main components. One is in the genome inside and another one is the coating. So they take the, the genome part, which is responsible to produce the, the spike protein of the virus, and they inject that particular part into the body and let the uh, body to produce the, uh, the protein, and then that will produce the antibody. That is the mechanism they are talking about in the Pfizer vaccine. Yeah. And other vaccine, we, that is a very simple and traditional method, and uh, normally, uh, like uh, they select one of the adenovirus, flu virus, from one of the chimpanzee type of. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Am I allowed to ask some questions? Oh, no. Of course. No, sure. <laughs> I know you work in the emergency department. How often do you come across patients with metabolic syndrome and very bad COVID symptoms? Do you come across a lot of them? Uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but mm. we have seen. We have seen. Uh, what, what do you mean by metabolic symptoms? Like yes. uh, you are talking about the diabetic, diabetic, -like diabetic hypertension, or the combination yes. of those. Yeah. Yeah. So because we all know with the comorbidity, they have a higher risk of with complications. That's why we are asking you that. Yes, of course. Yes. Somebody has a diabetes, mm -hmm. and already they have been protected as much as possible because they are taking a precautions, but if they are get affected, they will get affected more. And yeah. also when they present, obviously if they have a diabetic type one, especially, and uh, they can easily with this disease and their, their balance will be completely out of order. So they mm -hmm. will present with the diabetic ketoacidosis, very simple. Yeah. Yeah. And also the, you know, other, other patients or the heart conditions and the heart failure patients and all, if they have acute respiratory distress syndrome, already they are having a heart problem that going to complicate okay. the situation more, yeah. more yes, of yeah. course. Sure. Thank okay. you. Uh, yes, can I next? request all the doctors in the uh, platform, yes. shall we go through the normal uh, questions first and then go to the medical questions, please? Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Sure. so that because sure. all the other people can learn from it uh, the day to day, uh, how they can uh, deal with uh, it. What is Maneha is telling, we will keep our doctors talk later. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because yeah. otherwise, you yeah. know, people, um, not everybody can understand the language. That's the yeah. reason. Okay, yes, and there is a there is a question come. Uh, you know, how much vitamin D they have to take? And I think it's a very important question for a you know normal person. They perhaps don't know how much they have to take, and do they have to go and check their vitamin D? Over to you, Doctor Nausheed Khan. You are talking about vitamin D uh, intake level. Is that right? Yes, please. Yes. Correct. Right. Okay. So now, okay. Let me put it in a nice way. Don't take me different. Nowadays, uh, <laughs> seeing the uh, seeing the GP is like uh, seeing the ghost. You know, I'll put it in a nice way. I, okay. So that's not an easy task to see the GP and test the blood results and all these things. They are overloaded as well. So we will respect their work. Okay. So in this situation, I would suggest to take five thousand units uh, of a. Uh, but some people might need more than that, okay? At least you can start with a, a, a reasonable dose is 5,000 units per day. Mm -hmm. And then you can go up to 10,000 units as it depends on mm -hmm. that. If your GP is a, you know, you know, approachable, yes, of course, we can test after maybe a few weeks time and we can check your uh, vitamin D level. Most of our, our background people, will have some sort of deficiency. If you go and check it, you can see that almost all the people will have some sort of deficiency. No harm starting with that kind of dose. Sure. And you, you mean ethnic minorities? Uh, am I yes, correct? of course. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's what okay, I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, the next question is, um, what is the, you know, um, can COVID uh, patients who already got COVID can they yes. be delayed to have vaccination because they will already have the immunity for at least four months? Uh, sorry, I, I did not follow that one. That so if part. I, for it? example, if someone already got the COVID, can they be delayed on the list to have a, the vaccination a bit later because they oh, will have okay. the natural okay. immunity for some time? It depends. When did, when did they have the COVID? Okay. okay. So the, if, the, if somebody had the COVID, the maximum, they will have the protection maximum 150 days. That is the data so far we know. Okay. Sure. That is depend. Some people will have only three months. Some people will have five months. So we don't know that. So if a, a person had a COVID uh, uh, problems for maybe one month ago, you don't need to rush. You can wait for another couple of weeks or maybe one month. It's not a harmful thing. But if, and after that, slowly, slowly, your immunity level will go down slowly, slowly anyway. So the, the, the answer is somehow you have to take the vaccine as well. Because after having these COVID uh, problems, uh, COVID um, infection, that's not going to last more than 150 days. Mm -hmm. And the next question is, does the COVID have the potential to become like an endemic uh, or like an influenza uh, type of thing that it, we have to live with it forever and we have to take the vaccinations uh, periodically? So that means uh, you are saying, uh, I already mentioned that uh, we are going to live with this. Okay, we are not going yeah, to sure. go away. Okay, yeah, yeah. Every, uh, every year probably uh, we have to go with the, right? If this vaccine protect for maybe two years, in that case, yes, of course, every two years we might have to, we don't know. If it is uh, maybe only lasting for this vaccine uh, for one year, we might have to take every year, like a flu vaccine. But there's another question. Are we going to face a different virus next year? We don't know. Then in that case, yes. you might have to come up with a modified, a different type of vaccine. So th th already they plan for it. Whatever it is, the drug companies are ready. Drug companies, <laughs> okay, so they know, they, they can read your mind. They can read your mind. The, so now, uh, the, I, as I said before, we are going to be in a very difficult um, time ahead. One thing I want to just tell you, some people simply say, oh, why can't the government purchase uh, some 30 million doses and give? One vaccine cost 15 pounds, right? The Moderna, other, other type of vaccine costs uh, 25 pounds. Oxford vaccine cost around one to two pounds. End of the day, Oops. you and me, all of you, all of us here going to pay <laughs> this money. Remember that. That is come out of our tax, okay? So one point, somehow, that, that we have to pay for all these things. So that's why the government is thinking a little bit sensibly, buying some time, give at least one dose for the most of the many people, and by the time, get this Oxford vaccine and do the, you know, give it later. So that's what they are thinking. And also Oxford vaccine is now produced in India. So they have given the contract for them as well. 
So they are producing and they will get some more vaccine and giving the thing. Somehow they are sensibly thinking, I would say that I'm not a politician, I'm not supporting for government or anything. Whoever doing the correct thing, I will support. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, thank you, Dr. Khan. There are many, many more questions of private we have been sent and yeah. people are Go waiting. Ahead. Dr. Anton Mara, a long yes. while ago, she was uh, waiting yeah. patiently, so I'll give it to you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. Khan. Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm Dr. Anton Kanagasabe. Yeah, I know, I know. I've been, uh, last week I was in... Were you there? <laughs> and uh, well presented in layman's term. And I got two questions. One is, uh, Menaka had already asked that I typed it. To clarify that, if there is a race against the virus, how, how many people can be vaccinated? And there are people who are COVID positive and people who had been ill with COVID, uh, vaccinating them, can it be delayed from the time they got COVID positive? That way we can give it to more vulnerable people without immunity and then come to cover them uh, within, within three or four months of they becoming COVID positive is what, one of my questions. I think there's a guideline, isn't it? In a no, normally in our NHS setup, there's a guideline. I think if you had a COVID, you have to delay your vaccination for, I think I remember top of my ah, head. That, that had been covered, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. guideline. One month you have to wait to get the vaccine. If you're yeah. positive, it's 28 days you have to 28 wait. days, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we have a guideline for that. Can't have it within 28 days. Okay. The next question is, I came across that in South uh, Africa, there is a surgeon uh, who is sort of uh, doing bronchoscopy and uh, sucking out the mucus plugs and the patients are feeling much better, able to breathe more. Um, have you come across anything like that uh, more robustly? What I came across is in YouTube. Uh, I did not. But it makes sense because anyway, there will be obstruction in the mucus mm. plug mm. and the patients are now struggling to breathe. Mm. Already the hemoglobin have been, uh, you know, broken, you know, the, 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 because of the destruction of this uh, hemoglobin pathway and the oxygen carrying capacity is less. Mm. So if they take this uh, mucus plug, definitely that will improve the breathing. That is a common mm. sense. I don't think it's a big uh, rocket science. And probably, yeah. but, I, but I did not read about that, but it makes sense for me. Hmm. Sure. Thank, thank you. you, Dr. Vala. Thank you for asking. Hey, uh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Khan, for replying. Uh, I can Dr. say. Kanta will be more familiar with this because she is a, a, a geriatrician. Um, also, I'm, a, I'm a one of the COVID physicians. Mm -hmm. One of the, one thing we do now, number of cases are very high. So we are, that is done in the intensive care unit or high dependency unit when they go. What we do, give oxygen, antibiotic started and dexamethasone given, steroid, and patients are moved quickly with oxygen requirement checked and the concentration of oxygen change time to time. We increase or load. If they become more than 15 liter oxygen, they have to go to CPAP. Sadly, 80 people over the 80 years still maintain on 15 liter in the geriatric wards. And I must say number of people dying in geriatric wards very high now, their 80s. So, sure. and the suction done in the intensive care unit, when they are one-to-one -one care going to be given for younger, fitter people who have COVID. Sadly, it's, it's a problem now managing the patients who yeah, really need you. oxygen, emergency. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we need, give you the treatment, basic treatment we are giving. Yes. Sure. That, Thank you, Dr. Kanda. Now, uh, can I ask you, Dr. Kanda, because for my understanding as well, yeah. you know, uh, this yeah. is the time for my, me to ask the question. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, so do you think uh, maybe a few months ago you were managing the patient with the uh, intubation and all? Now, after this, uh, understanding the pathophysiology now, yeah. we are moving towards more, towards the CPAP yes. more now. Yeah. Do you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Now Good. the people who, all the people now see more CPAP machines are bought, more wards, two wards, two, more wards are open with CPAP facility. What they need is hyperbaric oxygen. Exactly. That's help, sure. that is not needed. Sure. And people okay. who be short of breath at home have to come to hospital immediately. That's all I say, I tell them. Any other symptom, sure. even don't care, but breathing, come to hospital because they need oxygen. I saw a patient yesterday, they become confused. People have become confused when they lack oxygen. They don't know. They have to be brought. Hypoxia. 
Hypo no, no, yeah. confused. Hypoxia, yes. It's yeah, hypoxia. Yeah. Hypoxia. Yeah. hypoxia. Hypoxia. They will bring the confusion in 10 seconds. Of course. That's it. Yeah. Quickly, they sure. become like a delirium. They develop delirium. So, yeah, you are right. The way we are managing now is very different. All people. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Kanta and Dr. Thank you, everyone. Raj Madhavan, I think you wanted to ask a question. There is a message for me. I have a question to Dr. Khan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Raj Madhavan from uh, British Columbia, Canada. Um, my first question is, uh, you were talking about 150 days of immunity. Does this mean the immunity is when you get vaccine? So that means is it, even after getting vaccine, the immunity lasts only for 150 days. This is one of my first question. Right, okay. So actually the 150 days I mentioned after getting the COVID infection, if yeah. you develop any immunity, antibody immunity, that will last for 150 days. We don't know anything about the vaccine yet. So yes. that has to be assessed in three months and six months and 12 months. That data will come probably next year. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got the answer. The other, my second question, the last question is, um, uh, people got uh, disease even after vaccine. Does that mean they got it from the vaccine or they got it outside of the vaccine? Very good. Okay. So the, at the moment, if you give one dose of vaccine and you are protected only 75%, in the layman term, if I want to explain, if you give the vaccine for four people and out of four, one person still can get the disease, the COVID-19, they will get the infection and disease. We have to understand this one. Getting the infection is one and getting the disease, that means complication and all the problems is another one. So whoever get the vaccine still, the virus can enter to their body. Okay, they can get the infection, but still, they will not get the disease because their the immunity will fight with the virus and destroy the virus. Then after that, they'll come out of the problem. So now that 75% protection means, and if you take the four people and three will be protected completely and or maybe from the disease, but one person still have a chance to get the infection. That's what I said before. This is a common question. Recently, one of our nursing staff, after taking the vaccine, three weeks later, and she got the infection because she is unfortunately within that 25% area. So that's why they get that. That is not because of the vaccine. That is pure virus sure. gave the infection. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, you answered my questions. Uh, thank you, Raj, and thank you, um, Um There's another question. There are plenty of questions for you. What age group mostly died in this current peak? And is the age group, is there any specific age group which are, who are more prone to this COVID? I think I'm going to leave this question to uh, Dr. Kanda because she is more appropriate than me because she is working in the board. I'm working in the front line. We are in a different area. Okay, fine. Uh, but things, I think, yeah. 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 It's affecting elderly people are more commonly affected from nursing. Is it because low immunity, multiple problems, medical problems. But at the same time, I have seen people, I'm sorry to say anyone, I don't want to offend anyone, Younger group patients who are coming, uh, a lot of them are obese, overweight. Um, now we are seeing a bit of a, a, a asthmatic patients as well, but um, uh, one of the common, this thing, I, I think Dr. Khan will agree with me, uh, weight is one of the major problems is, is causing, because we are seeing people in that category more, uh, very overweight, morbid obesity and people like that. And, um, but, but age group more, now we are seeing over 60s, but a lot of elderly over, first wave, we have a lot of over 80s. Now we are seeing a mixture, but still elderly people are dying more. That's sure. I can say. I totally agree. Thank you. Thank you so they much. Time, time, people, for me to, <laughs> time for me to wear my exercise shoes and go and do some <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but today I will. Two patients in my ward, 44 years, uh, women from uh, Southeast Asian, both are quite obese, florid COVID. So it's, then I thought it's very important. We need to maintain, as Dr. Khan was saying, exercise is very, very important. Very important. Yes, of course. Sure. Okay. Please yeah, walk. So both, of you have, both of you have inspired me to, to you know, put my exercise shoes and go and do some more exercise. Thank you. Uh, Krishna, over to you. 
Hi, Dr. Navshad. Thank you for that. It's very clear. But I picked up on a little contradiction that I want to check with you. Um, because I work with people who might actually be in that same boat. And the contradiction is, when it came to taking the vaccine, we, we know at the moment, especially amongst ethnic groups, there are a lot of refusals or resistance. But when you were talking about the vaccine earlier, about yourself, you did say your wife had to tie you down before you agreed to take it. And I'm just right. wondering, I'm just wondering if you can, I'm more interested in hearing what was your actual reservation? What I, think was he said, I, I, I think he said he doesn't like injections, Chris, not particularly this vaccine. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll explain that. You know, <laughs> so when I, when I present normally, I want to keep the audience very focused towards me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so in this situation, really what happened, <laughs> and for some reason, I, I put this publication in my uh, uh, public, page, um, public page in the Facebook as well. We have a cellular immunity. We are Sri Lankans. I'm proud of it. You know, so we have a BCG vaccine has been given for each and every one in our country because mm -hmm. of that. Because of the cellular immunity and and we have an inbuilt immunity as well. Because of that, I survived for last ten months. Yeah. Right. Then I told my wife I survived up to this period. I was in the peak situation. I'm okay. Why? I you know, shall I postpone this vaccine? I just for a you know, fun, I, I, I ask her, now vaccine has been arranged for me. You want me to take it? Really, you want me to take it? And she said, don't come home, okay? Yeah. Take the vaccine because you are the man of the house and also you must be protected and you, are, you must be an example for other people. You have to take the vaccine and come. Then I was laughing, okay, go and give the things. And, uh, but that lady also asked me, uh, uh, you know, which hand are you going to go for? Do you have any choice? Go for whatever the hand you want. You, you. No, that's what I said. But I, I don't like the needles for some reason. You know. <laughs> I, agree I, I, totally I agree with that. I agree with Doctor Khan. Totally yeah. support the vaccination. Yeah, I agree with Doctor Khan. Um, after ten months uh, exposure, I also I I I didn't. Yeah, no. uh. But on June, when I went and checked antibody, I never had symptoms. I never had swab positive, but I had antibodies. In you June. had antibody. I had antibodies. So I don't have, that, antibody, I thought I'm I don't not... have uh, antigen, both. Now, because my cellular <laughs> I don't know how antibodies came, but December, my son and daughter told me, if you don't take vaccine, we are not going to forgive you. You should take it. Here we go. We got, we got the second wave. They were worried the time I was working all the time. So I took the vaccine. And yesterday I had the second dose. I must say second dose more, and is painful today. But no yes, other yes. symptoms. I would say everybody take vaccine. Sure. Yeah. I had yes. after I, uh, 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Because I, I know like a couple of my friends who are doctors and dentists, they have taken the vaccination and they told the same. The second one was a bit, was more, a painful. bit more painful. Yeah. The, the arm, yeah. Arm is oh, yeah. arm painful. That's all the sight. Yeah. But yeah. Your, um, your, 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 the, the form answer, the form answer is take it. Take, take it. the vaccine. Take, take it. it. Everybody <laughs> opportunity to take it. Yeah, okay. I it. also yeah, got the two doors. I'm okay. Perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just that for people who don't talk Tamil, which means if you, if I am going to be blessed with something, everybody else should be blessed with that. Because there are so many different questions coming through. I'm just trying to give everybody a chance. That's all. I think I it now. Uh, despite all the treatment that has been offered, the death rate daily rate is very high. Yeah. So yeah. where are we failing? Oh, yes, that's a, that is. I, I, I already seen the question. I about to answer that anyway. So okay. it's a, a reasonable, very good question. Okay. Uh, infection rate is high because of the new variant. That is one reason, and because there's a seventy-five percent faster than the previous one. So if you if you infect more, then the death rate also will be high. That is a one thing. The second thing is. And uh, you know that Christmas is one of the big celebration for the you know our UK setup. 
and there is no other festival. We have a multiple festivals, but here is one of the big festival. So somehow after ten months, they some managed to go to the family and they hugged each other <laughs> and uh, they nicely uh, spread the virus. You know, the virus was waiting for that time, so the virus jumped up everywhere. So the rate of infection. Now, when was the Christmas? Now, what is the time now? Probably now two, three, two weeks. So two, three weeks. So this is the time we will get the peak. That's why the number of infection is high. That's why the number of death is high. So, and on top of it, if you say, there's another reason for that. In the Christmas time, who will they will meet? They will go and meet the grandparents. Yeah. They will go and meet the mother, elderly mother or someone. You know, all of them are very high risk population. They were keeping them in the site. Now in the Christmas time, they met them. And then after that, they spread it very fast. That's why the death sure. rate is high. There are a number of reasons for that. Okay, uh, sure. and nothing yeah, but yesterday's news also said the substantial proportion is under 55. But uh, that is high. That's what right. I am... You see, in the first wave, right, okay. majority were 80, 80 plus. So we accepted, accepted yeah. the death rate. But now, yesterday's news also said that. Uh, because compared to the previous virus infection, this new one is mortality at less. Is it correct? Speed of infection is more, but mortality is less. Is no, it I correct? Say, I won't say mortality less now. Okay, that's why mortality I want. Still high. They are very, very okay. So is, is, it sim is it similar to the previous one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, okay. To answer that question, there are two two part questions in that. The first thing is that the 55 age, whatever. Now in this, there are patients presenting with a young age as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that is true. But that does not mean young patients are more affected. No, it's not like that. Not like okay, that. that is not being said. But still the elderly people and the high risk people are getting oh, affected more. Yeah. That is one thing. Sure. Infectivity is fast. But mortality doesn't much change, so that's the yeah. that's the current uh, data we have. But still, yeah. the research is going on. Is this virus more severe or then? But so far, we don't have a clear uh, exactly. data show that uh, you know mortality rate is high or the severe like that. So that is the sure. you know we have to talk with the evidence. So that is the evidence sure. we have. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Khan. That's another question. There are a few questions. I'm trying to go through all of them. Uh, according to the, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the way, the, in the order what it came to me. As we are ta um, taking so many precautions against COVID, which illnesses that we normally see at this time of the year, are you not seeing as many cases of COVID or, you know, the combination of them? So, you know, in this time of the year, usually it's just during the Christmas That's time, we have a lot of uh, flu uh, people come yeah. from influenza and stuff like that. Is it very different from that, or is it a combination of COVID and those patients as well you're taking, getting, or is it predominantly COVID or predominantly other people? That's what the question is, I think, as well as I understand. That. Uh, right. This is a this is a common question they ask, but it's pretty yeah. obvious. You know, we lost two million people in the world, right? So mm -hmm. that is completely not normal. That is, we have to understand mm -hmm. very clearly. The second thing is, yes, of course, every year. There will be a half a million people will die all over the world because of the flu. I sure. agree. But this one is completely different. And you can see that. Now, every year, our emergency department and the acute medicine department and all and will be packed up. So normally that happens. Every year sure. we have a crisis situation. Now, yeah. this is another on top of it, another load on top of it. That's why we are struggling at the moment. So... Obviously, it's a different, not the same. Sure. Thank you so much. There's another question. If Sri Lankans have got BCG vaccination to protect uh, from, you know, it, 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 and if you think it is protecting us to an extent uh, uh, from COVID, then number of death rates, will they vary in our ethnicity? Number of, uh, that means we are BCG vaccine somehow playing a role, very important role, in this uh, COVID-19 situation, because of the BCG vaccine, we have a better cellular immunity, right? Okay, let me put it this way. <coughs> there is a type of cells, the T lymphocytes cells. 
And in that T lymphocytes, there are different types, CD4 and CD8 and such. So one type of cell will memorize your, uh, your whatever the infection comes to your body. For some reason, there's a cross memory in this, but further research is necessary, but there are some papers have been published. So for the sure. BCG vaccine, whoever had, they have some sort of a cellular immunity. And because of that, they are being protected more. That's why in Sri Lanka, if you see that, the number of death is very less in, in Sri Lanka. I think a total roughly around 200 odd patients died in Sri Lanka. And also naturally the, the, the environment also, they, you know, uh, that also will give some protection. The day to day they get some, some sort of infections and all that will develop their cellular immunity. And that also will give the protection. Definitely there's a different uh, for the people who have taken the vaccines. Uh, the BCG okay. vaccines. Okay, I'm going to ask a question which perhaps is close to, closer to your heart. Some I don't know that it is anonymously being sent to me. Is there a special purpose for burning the dead bodies of people con um, contracted to COVID-19 instead of burying? Because I know I haven't spoken to you about it, but I have anyway have seen your articles or you know, posts about it. So if there's someone asking the question. Right, I have to give this uh, answer very clear and precise. Otherwise, that will divert the things into <laughs> other area. Okay. So, right, I, whoever asked this, uh, uh, thank you for asking that question. The WHO doesn't say you have to burn the body because everybody have our own belief. For example, now in this panel, most of the people are the Hindus. So Hindus, they want to cremate the body. That is their belief. At the same time, there's so many Abrahamic religious people, including the Muslims and Jews and uh, so many Christians, they want to bury the body. So that is their belief. My point is we have to respect everybody's belief. That is the first point. The second point is, according to the WHO guideline, that does not say you have to cremate the body. That is the second point. So you can do both. The third point, there's no clear evidence, there's no evidence this will spread. When you bury the body, that will spread the virus through the water. There's no such a thing. So that is out <laughs> of the question. But very important, and most of the people did not understand this point, I'm going to make it now. Probably make sure the internet connection is very clear, otherwise that the half <laughs> of the answer will bring up sort of problems. Most of the people did not understand the WHO guideline. That's a problem, okay? The w, according to the WHO guideline, there are some expectation. We have to make sure every single country in the world, they have to follow that expectation. For example, and your groundwater, groundwater means this is not infecting the virus thing. The groundwater should be in a deep enough. And also from that, uh, the body burying area and there are, I think, minimum 250 meters away from any drinking water. For example, the UK, have you seen any drinking water well somewhere? I never seen a, somebody drinking from the well, okay? So we always uh, drink the water from our tap, but in Sri Lanka, the setup is different. So if you have that kind of setup, you have to follow that, that guideline from WHO and also, and from, from that point, 500 meters, within that 500 meters, uh, nobody can live. You know, there, uh, nobody can live. So there are some guidelines. The government, government have the responsibility to maintain that guideline and, and respect that everybody's belief is really important. That is their responsibility. So they have to respond, uh, they have to respect the the people who want to bury the body and they have to uh, you know, respect the people who want to cremate the body. So that is the answer for this. But you can, cream, uh, you can bury the body. There's no question about it. Because of that, there will not be any problem at all. I believe I clearly answered that question. Otherwise, that will go all over the place. Sure, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, any other questions, please, from uh, the audience? Um, I think, I, I, since the apologies, if I have missed anyone's questions, because there were plenty of questions, I will slide that my, yes, please, Swati. Dr. Khan, today I uh, uh, read the news that there have been 23 deaths in Norway, uh, aged 80 years. They were all 80 years when they took the first shot of Pfizer vaccine. Uh, I know, I do understand age has been a, 
reason for that also but i also want to understand when emergency approval was given to the vaccine why the data is not being made uh, public to by the regulators right okay that's a very good question for some reason what is a pharmacist what is a you know pharmaceutical scientist so yes. you know it means to yeah, answer yeah of course so uh, fortunately i have seen the data from the pfizer I have a full uh, document if you want i can uh, email to you or i can send you i have seen every page so there's a big document around i don't know maybe 50 70 pages or something like that uh, the point is we did normal vaccines they take around maybe a number of years maybe minimum so far in the history minimum number of years is 5 years okay now we have a situation we have no other choice so in this situation we calculated the risk and we have taken the decision according to that so and in this situation i would say is a sensible decision to take that decision and uh, we don't have much data means they have tested around 35 40000 people but normally you know millions of people will be tested you know so in this situation they tested a reasonable number of people and different group of people but they did not consider the pregnant mothers they did not consider the the children so that's why they don't want to give the vaccine for them so now they are giving so maybe for another one year time they will reassess the uh, whatever the problems they have come across and they will move forward but so far we are, they are not we can't guarantee this will give the protection completely we have to wait and see that is a summary thank you swati thank you dr pan um anyone else wants to ask a question it's a big area i'm so glad because we did not talk about the virus isn't it we don't want to talk about it. there are so many phd around you know so we are <laughs> discussing, uh, we are discussing uh, the outline or maybe a yeah. surrounded problems yes yeah, sure. face so many problems think, because of the covid yeah. that's what we are think, discussing yeah, yeah. So because yeah, i think we are more I interested in answer that question Yeah, I think Can I ask a question? Question? yes yes mommy yes yes please yeah um dr naushad khan i've listened to so many of your speeches and you're really amazing now it's about the viral load um um i just want to know uh, more about the viral load you know when we talk about the normal days um saying in 6 months 7 months time is it safe to meet people outside um in open area than in meeting people in the cinemas and stuff like that so sorry let me clearly understand the question so you're asking a uh, outside meeting the people outside what yeah in a park or anywhere is it better to meet them there rather than meeting in cinema or oh, yes of course yeah so right you know when you are in the closed area it's very easy to spread because if somebody cough or somebody when i talk and the, the small particles will be in the floating in the environment that can come to the next person so because of that the closed environment is favorable for the vaccine uh, so viruses so when you are in the outside is extremely unlikely to get the infection in the outside so preferably outside so that is a, the reality and uh, now you know it's very difficult to if you are in the park get the infection from another person is extremely rare unless if the wind is towards you when they talk and that come to you in your face or something is a, is a very uh, rare situation but otherwise preferably outside but how long are we going to continue this talking outside story <laughs> <laughs> okay. particularly in winter particularly in winter it's hard now now we are moving to the the era and maybe in the dating side also before we ask the name we are going to ask have you been vaccinated that kind of era we are moving now <laughs> okay three requisites for dating <laughs> run to live in the moon or another planets you know to take all the precaution that's what i wrote typed it earlier Uh, we, have yeah, to, we have to we have to contact uh, uh, you know richard branson for that <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you thank you so much wali uh, thanks uh, dr khan you know it was uh, you know it is amazing presentation because it i, I think it's a fun field as well which is good because it is a very serious yeah, topic and dry yeah. topic otherwise um, what i was trying to say before is because the reason i i guess it's important to talk around the subject rather than oh, about the covid yes. virus itself because that's what is the uh, common man i think that's what we are interested in 
we are not going to do thesis on this uh, virus. What we want to know is how it is going to affect our lives and our loved ones' lives and how we can live with these things in the future. Yes, of course. Now, in a, if you ask the every, every member of this panel and they will go through a number of problems in their family. For example, now I will tell my situation, then you will, you will feel the same way. I can't go and see my mother's funeral and I did not go. Okay, I did not. My, one of my father's own brother died maybe a couple of weeks ago. I did not go. That is a simple. And also the number of people passed away in our family members and, you know, known friends and all. We couldn't visit one element. The second thing is my son is in the medical school. And now most of the time he is like in front of the computer. You never seen the uh, the anatomy or whatever it is in the face to face, <laughs> and uh, probably I don't know when did he see his uh, lecturer in the, in the in the past. Okay, so that kind of era they are wor working around, and uh, most of you know they don't even see their friends in the face to face. Yeah. More, yeah. they are in the yeah. that kind of scenario going through, and also uh, and time to time they are closing the university and opening the university. See that situation. And we can't go, and uh, when did we go for a holiday or something to stress ourselves? We did not go. And even for a small thing, so just we can't travel and see other family members who are living in the UK. So we are unable to see. So the number of problems we are going through every day somehow, right? And, you know, it's not, a, it's not an easy thing wearing the mask and go. We can, people can tell simply, I can ask uh, Kanta, and uh, maybe, um, you know, we have a FAP3 mask that smell like a complete, I don't want to use that word in, in this panel, that smell like that word, okay? Yeah. So yeah. I can't tolerate that smell. So uh, how can you, and also when you wear the mask, that will make you like a suffocating the things, exactly. you know, that will make you tired. Yeah. When you come home, yeah. it's difficult. How long are we going to continue this kind of scenario? Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. also now my trainees are there, every three month rotation or maybe six month rotation, they are coming and going. Now, when they come back, maybe another two years time, uh, Mr. Khan, can I have a, uh, you know, maybe some reference, who the hell are you? <laughs> I've never seen this. Yes. I've never seen the trainee's face. So this kind of practicality point of view, so many problems we so all many of us are facing so problems, in a different, yeah. different ways. So, that's what we have to talk about. We don't want to talk about the COVID vaccine, you know, the virus or whatever it is here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, like exams are cancelled. Um, you know, that is one another element. That, there's no element. Yeah. Like huh? yeah. And How now they're saying they don't have that? any exams. So we don't even still know whether there are no exams or exam is not even clear yet. What is that mini? It's like an iPhone, uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, like a mini phone and the bigger version and the exactly, yeah, version. Yeah, because like they're the saying, the... yeah, they're saying there has to be a public exam. So there's a thought uh, now they are they might keep a mini exam, not the full version of exams, like you explained. Yeah. This is, so now I, I I really appreciate in this panel there are different people have a different skills. They are in a specialized in a different area. For example, uh, last week I was with uh, Dr. Anton and uh, he was presenting this, uh, you know, mental health related things. So the different whether Dr. Kanda is working with the elderly people. So we don't we don't need to talk about the virus. So we have uh, so many other problems. We are not expert. Everyone is not expert in that. So yeah. we have to understand other side of the problems around us mm -hmm. and we have to move forward. Yeah. We, are, we are not going to get rid of this virus. This virus is going to live with us for a yeah. long, long, long time. That's the reality. Yeah. We have to understand this. So then somehow we have to find a solution and move forward. Yeah. And I think uh, now, uh, now I just now I observe one of my, uh, my father's brother is here, the Akbar Ali. And I did you know, the two weeks ago, his own brother passed away, my my father's own brother. I couldn't go and see. That's the reality now we are living. You know, yeah, yeah. how are we going to move forward? So yeah. sometimes, mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you so much for telling that because I think we, uh, Dr. Anton Bala spoke about mental well-being, but yeah. the this this uh, situation is definitely not helping the mental well-being of anyone right now. Can I mention something, Menaka? Of course. Yeah, yes. B basically, we have to prepare ourselves mentally. Exactly. Compared to us, there are so many people worse off than us. Yes. Say, look at uh, African country in Sri Lanka and India. People are poor, they are living under the bridge, and uh, no place to live except one room for maybe five or ten people. 
we have the Zoom, we have the MST, and uh, food is available. And there are people who have been taken as prisoners of war. They have stayed there for years in one cell. Can't we stay in our house and in the back garden? Uh, we had to see people who are worse off than us, for us uh, rather than uh, looking at, oh dear, we can't go on a holiday and we can't talk to the front door neighbor, but that will come. I'm, I'm sure soon they'll allow us to talk to the front door neighbors. <laughs> it, it is said that being alone is different from being lonely. So yeah. we have now getting used to being you know, alone, but you shouldn't be lonely because there's access through internet yeah. and other means, isn't it? But yeah. people didn't know these differences. Mm. Thank God the Zoom and uh, uh, what uh, MST and no, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I also make a comment? I see some elderly people coming to hospital now. They don't want to go home. One of my patients told me, Doctor, if you, <laughs> if you discharge me, my daughter locked me in a room, I will commit suicide. So then the ward sister referred her to psychiatrist. It's a Sri Lankan patient. I was I went and met and talked. What is your problem? Doctor, I used to go to temple every week. Everything I was doing, now my daughter has told you can't go anywhere. So the mental impact of social isolation in older people actually worse. All the younger ones using Zoom, phone, and everything. The only thing she enjoyed, going to the temple, going to the shop, sit there. Everything stopped now. And, uh, and daughter and mother started fighting. Only daughter. So many years they lived. Now she says, my son-in-law doesn't want to see me. Because he, she used to come to the sitting room to watch the television. Now he's working from home, it seems. He's an accountant. So he has told, after <laughs> five only, you can come to the sitting room. So the fight between that never had. Now, so these are the social problems. We are new facing new challenges in, in yeah, our yeah. life. Smartphone. That's what we have to think how we can. Then I, I had a long discussion with the family, and finally they agreed to put a television network into her room and a new TV. Smartphone would do. I told you, you should have done smartphone. it long ago because the mother could at least something. As you say, so, a smartphone also would do the trick, I suppose. Yeah, so the, exactly. <laughs> but but, the, but the, since the close when they come, the, the, rea the reaction between the it is becoming of worse. Course. That is actually Christian. Yeah, will, it's so much harder. I know, you know, I know it, these are real uh, problems. Yeah, they are real, real. Case. I think like Dr. Like Khan says, the social problems. I'm sorry to hear about your loss of your mother and uncle, Dr. Khan. I did not know that. Very sorry to hear. No, everybody in this uh, panel would have lost uh, some of Somebody the family members of a friend or all went through the same thing, you know. Exactly. So that's yeah. how the life. Yeah, of course. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, what Dr. Bala said, I think there's a point in it because I think if we have some kind of thing, you know, I was reading and I think I wrote something about it as well recently because if we have something, we look something we find to look forward to something. And I think Dr. Victor Frankel uh, speaks about it as well. If we if can think of something that we want to do even two years later or three years later or next year, perhaps that will keep you going. Like for me, I think my mom is, I don't know whether she's still on the platform. For me, I am so looking forward to going back home and seeing my parents. And that is something to look forward to, regardless when yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so I think we all have to find that something what we can do when it, all this is done. And perhaps it will help us to you know, um, keep going. Uh, those people who are planning to go abroad, yes. uh, Dr. Khan has any views on uh, whether we could book, book the tickets now right. or wait for a while? Uh, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. And also now I found some uh, very interesting answer. Uh, you know, have you heard about one of the passport going to be introduced very soon? That is in the uh, discussion at this age, uh, we call it as a I proof. Okay, I will type it in the chat. You can read about it. Mm. This is I expected this, but anyway, now it's coming into reality. So basically, you have a passport, and uh, that passport will have your immigration details. Now, in the future, probably that will be included in the passport, or maybe a separate passport. They, it's an electronic kind of passport is a I prove that's the name of that. Now you have to have the vaccine to go to the other country. That will happen very soon, especially to the European countries. 
yeah. for the time being now you have to have a, a at least a, within 72 hours um what is that a pcr test to go to uh, sri lanka or any other country i think after that also still most of the countries they have a quarantine system but in reality we will face a immunity passport very soon that's that's what going to happen thank okay? you doctor so the discussion is uh, discussion is going on i'm going to give two more questions Can i ask a question uh, minaka Yes of course <laughs> feel free Yes um my question is uh, can be a little bit um, silly but uh, everybody has this uh, this doubt about it can these viruses be made by man and spread to the world Right okay <laughs> good question uh we should be really careful when we answer the question as well Yes so we I have to I'll do my best okay um <laughs> uh, i answered scientifically then you can get the answer yourself right uh the, the we believed the sars virus and mers virus the main pathophysiology was and basically acute respiratory distress syndrome but now we have a more understanding we thought is very similar like sars virus yeah. so that's why we started to treat like a sars virus but now we are we have a clear understanding this is a pathophysiology is significantly different okay there is one point the second point is uh, i did a lot of research on this area this is not purposefully done this is not purposefully done for a good reason somebody tried something and something slipped that's the way i can answer that Uh, for the aids for 30 years the vaccine being tried so one point they started to do the trial of a vaccine production by using one type of coronavirus and they can introduce uh, change some genetical modification and bring a vaccine for aids that project was started for a good reason and one of the advanced countries started that project and after that that is in that is in docu- well documented that is well documented that is not a conspiracy theory is well documented it's available so after that they said no this can bring a lot of problems so we had to stop then they stopped that project then the funding was moved to wuhan the as far as i know the project was continuing most likely and there are different security layers in the lab that kind of lag is very extremely high security layers around maybe five six layers that security was breached and that slipped that's what they are talking about now i should be really careful here in the tv or maybe in the public forum when we talk about but in summary nothing purposefully done somebody tried for a good reason and something slipped that's my understanding so far okay now that is going like a chain now now already jumped into another animal pink uh, sorry minks the minks from the minks to human being i don't know where is it going to jump again we don't know so that is the situation we are living whatever it is whatever it is some disaster happen thank Very you much, so much that uh, does that suggest Mm-hmm. perhaps we should all become vegetarians no, i no. think that is for another forum <laughs> okay. yeah. no. easy to say before more, more conspiracy comes through and before more discussions comes oh, okay right but, but there's, a, there's a concept called zoonosis means a, an infection gets transmitted from one species to another species so that's been known from history so i'm not sure why people can't grasp that zoonosis is the term given when an infection of bug jumps from one species to another and also the mutation is part of evolution so i'm not sure why people aren't grasp that um, and accept it whatever there is a there be always conspiracy theory in any situation yes but we should have the wisdom that's what i believe um reality is something very hard in life i, I have done a lot of work on reality and i written a book about it i don't want to boast about it that is about awareness in in fact there is an opportunity 
I might be able to you know, talk about it. So people don't use their awareness or wisdom, but jump into conclusion, which is very sad. And I shall stop that. I stop with that. <laughs> no, I guess uh, to be fair to a common person, uh, not every, we have to understand we all are different people and we have different interests. And, you know, just because we, I am interested in, you know, I'm a dentist, I'm very much interested in my mental well-being, resilience, and all that. If you ask me anything about COVID-19 until, uh, you know, um, I mean, the basics I knew, but otherwise, I told Dr. Nasir Khan, I said, this is a subject I have absolutely no clue. But I think, I guess, we all have different uh, priorities and different interests in life. I guess that's the answer as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing which I did in the spring and summer was put my clothes when I went out in the sun. Which we did in Sri I was a Sri Lankan, I'm Sri Lankan. That's what we did in all, you know, virus infection. And I did that. Unfortunately, there's no sun to do that in the winter. But <laughs> but those things are never spoken about, which I am puzzled because, you know, that, that would help in a way um, because viruses don't live on their own. They live in a whole cell. And of course, you know, that is the idea of drying out clothes in the sun. And sure. anyway, <laughs> that's for me. Yeah, Mr. Jagadar, yeah. but uh, don't you think so? If we put it in a proper dryer, it dries it very well as well. No, no, very no. high yeah, temperature. We have, yeah. ultraviolet. we have asked to wash our scrubs over 60 degree temperature. Yeah. So yes. I, I was about to say that. that yeah. Most of the nights I bring and Use it in sixty degree and then wash it in that. Then that that that's enough. They say. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. But the sun was available. The sun is free. <laughs> in washing hot water needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think from an economical point of view, in that case. <laughs> no, no, that's common sense, isn't it? You know, when I grew up, uh, you know, when yeah. all we had chicken pox measles and all. That, that. Is, that is the reason Sri Lanka the, uh, countries like that didn't have such high mortality. I think, isn't it, Doctor Khan? Maybe that is another mortality reason. Is less, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> um, and the people are socializing better there. I think I heard from when the weddings are taking place there. People are. You don't need to tell them how to socialize our people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I found it. Okay. To socialize so, better there. Yes, of course, they are really good in socializing. So we take the count for many things and definitely one is that, um, yeah. Can I ask one question, Menaka? Yeah. Yes, of course, Vani, you are the last one to ask the question. Okay, uh, it's about the vaccine. Uh, do we have a choice on what vaccine we get? I know you favor the Oxford one. I just want to know the Pfizer one because it plays with mRNA. Is it affects the younger children and the generations to come? Right. Uh, I, the reason I prefer the Oxford vaccine, so we trialed uh, the number of uh, vaccine production based on that same technology, is very, very unlikely to go wrong. So I, we know very well, that's why I preferred the Oxford vaccine. But this particular, the mRNA vaccine, nothing wrong, according to the theory, nothing wrong with that because we are sending any virus in it only the mRNA piece we are sending that will produce the uh, uh, the spike protein, whatever, and that will produce against that uh, antibody. So that is the technology we are talking about. So I'm a bit of a cautious. So then I said, okay, I would rather see more. I wait, man, we have a choice. So we will go for the Oxford vaccine. Unfortunately, when I went to the hospital and to take my vaccine and I asked the, the nurse asked, me the question, do you know which vaccine you are taking? And then I asked the question, do I have any choice here? And she said, no, we have only one vaccine. Then why, why are we asking the question? Oh. Okay. The next question she asked, you want the left hand or right hand? Do I have the choice? Yes. Okay. Go for the left. Okay. Do I have any other choice? Can I, because I don't have much muscle in my arm, can I go some other place? And she said, no, unfortunately, <laughs> there are so many people here. They, they jumped at something uh, in my shoulder, you know? That's a that's a situation. So at the moment, Scotland they are giving Oxford vaccine. Some places in the UK they are giving the Oxford vaccine, but the, the number of doses are not high like uh, you know the Pfizer vaccine. They don't have enough doses because the production of the vaccine is uh, take will take some time. That's the problem. But they are taking all the uh, vaccines and giving as much as possible. But India is helping a lot. India, anyway, the vaccine production, they are one of the key country in the world and they are uh, producing so many, uh, so many number of uh, the um, Oxford uh, vaccine and also they have their own vaccine as well. 
that is also similar technology like that. And China, they are producing another vaccine that also same like Oxford vaccine and uh, that also same technology. So that also will come. So in summary, maybe another few months time, the, the number of doses will uh, come to uh, UK and other countries. And the Sri Lanka hopefully will be helped by uh, maybe China or uh, India. That's what I'm expecting. And uh, all the developing countries have, you know, we have to give the support for them. What is the point of we have the vaccine? So are we going to live like in, in one corner? No, we have to look after everybody in the world. So, you know, this is a global problem. We have to support each other. So, and those countries will be protected, uh, should be protected and India will support in that case, I believe. Because they can't afford for uh, 25 pounds for uh, each patient. So that will cost around roughly around, I believe 5,000 rupees per patient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a lot of money. So that will be expensive for them. Uh, other vaccines, Oxford vaccines, roughly around one to two pounds. I'm talking about maybe 300, 400 rupees in Sri Lankan money. So hopefully that should be reasonable uh, uh, approach, I believe. There's a question yeah, yeah. from Ambi, I think. Ambi, Ambi. Ambi. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for inviting Menaka and uh, very well explained and uh, very well answered all the question, doctor. And uh, he was laughing all the time. He's, uh, you know, we are, he's not scaring us. That is a very good way to, uh, so, you know, answer the question. Sometime uh, I watch his program on IBC, uh, Tamil, and uh, very, very, very well explained. And uh, thank you for that. God bless you all. Yeah, thank you, MP. MP joined us from Canada, so thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you, and uh, so we have to laugh, we have to smile, you know, otherwise we'll go and uh, depress, I have to get an appointment from Dr. Anton. I don't want that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, uh, oh, somebody is going to ask the question. Yeah. Uh, Who is that? Uh, my name is Shanmu uh, yes. the Thank you, Dr. Khan. Uh, and, and probably it's better better answered by Kanda, I think, but you can answer it if, if, if you don't mind. Yes, sure. This is about my friend who has had uh, admitted to COVID and um, he had, he's been discharged from the hospital, though he had some couple of clots in his lungs and he has given some injection injections to self-trained uh, by the hospital. He has taken injections and I hear that that injection is uh, given to uh, sort of kind of reduce the clots in the lungs, also some medication. Uh, he's not well at all. He's, there's no improvement. As a friend, uh, what, how, what can I advise him to him? I'm a bit concerned about him as a friend. Do you think it's, it is best, it, I think it's best to perhaps uh, ask a medical professional to speak rather than uh, anyone else. That's what would be my uh, yeah. advice. But you know, I will hand it over to say, Dr. Khan. I would say... Khan. I would say he has to follow the medical advice and his GP's uh, instruction from hospital. Do, do, do the notes would have, the letter would have passed to the GP. So continuing the medication and support. Only thing you can advise is to give him emotional, yeah. emotional support. Yeah. A lot of our people, that's what they need. I don't think family or friends should interfere in any of the medical treatment advised by the consultant or GPs. Yeah, I receive I various calls from people telling me, I tell them, please, you give the support emotional, but yeah. follow the medical advice because otherwise things are, won't be very helpful. But mm. so we don't know what is exactly the case he had. Sure, sure, sure. He must have been a long COVID and he must have had clot in the lungs, pulmonary embolism. So he's on a blood thinning medication, either mm. it's injection or tablet. But by looking at his injection is given. So there must be some reason why they didn't give a blood thinning tablet, but injection. So it's a mm. medical issue. It's, you have right. to just give him the support, moral support and talk. Moral support. Okay, thank you. thank you. Encourage and keep them occupied, encourage, keep them happy. Life is very difficult for a lot of people now. We can't do anything much, but at least talking, thinking about the good times you had, making them morally better. That is what you can do. That Thank you very much. That's very Thank good. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I mean, I, I think that my take would be the same. I think anything to do with medicine, I think just refer to the experts. 
and uh, not interfere. Dr. Khan, do you have anything to say? Uh, no, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting us. And uh, it's a pleasure to sharing uh, the information with the uh, other colleagues over here and the other uh, you know, audience. And uh, each of us, we have a unique skill. That's what I, I always say. We, are, we can't be expert for everything. So uh, we have only very tiny amount of knowledge each one of us uh, might have. And by we put together, that will come like a very productive solution. We have to think sensibly. We will support each other. Yeah. And uh, one good news is last year, we did not have this much of friends and, uh, yeah, you know, the yeah. people. Now. <laughs> so somehow yeah. the COVID has changed those kind of uh, uh, the culture now. We know each other at least through the, uh, the Zoom and uh, multiple um, uh, the, the media platforms. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, you are doing a great job, uh, Menaka. Uh, and uh, now rather than talk about the COVID itself, that means like a virus itself, don't disturb that virus. It's a very funny thing, okay? <laughs> and then we will talk about there are so many problems around it, okay? And uh, we are all of us going through that problem. So you can bring uh, every expert in that particular field. And uh, we, I love to join and uh, we love to, you know, listen to all of us. And somehow we help other around, you know, maybe our family members and the staff members and everybody else. So that's how we have to move forward. Keep smiling and be strong. Move forward. There's no other way. Okay. And uh, that's what I said. We are married now. Okay. So it's a case and we have been forced to marry this virus. There's no other option. We will learn how to live with it. That's the only option. Okay. Villain is behind. He will not give a chance <laughs> to escape. Okay? So that's the situation. What to do? That's what I say. Thank you so much for inviting. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. It was so, like real such a pleasure yes, to yes. have a speaker. Very and nice. you know, it's such okay. a dry and serious subject. You definitely made the audience smile. I think you must be the only person who can make a smile uh, about <laughs> COVID-19. So well done to you. Thank you so much. And uh, I mean, I'm so Thank looking forward much. to having you come and doing the webinar as well. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone on the platform. It, it is us ever. It is really, really great to have everyone. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who joined and in uh, Facebook. And a huge thanks for Meet Menaka team and from Dr. Naushad Khan uh, for attending. And hopefully you learned. I definitely learned a lot. So we will see you next Saturday at the same place, same time. Until then, be happy, stay safe, and keep smiling.